Hey guys, I wanted to give you my thoughts on Samurai Wolf 1 and 2. This is a brand new release from Film Movements under their Film Movement Classics label. Uh, these are Japanese spaghetti westerns, and if you're like, spaghetti westerns weren't Japanese. So Hideo Gosha, the filmmaker behind these two movies, uh, you may know him from movies like Three Outlaw Samurai, which I think has a Criterion Collection release. He was a television director uh, at the time of this in the 60s. He was watching the spaghetti westerns that were coming out of Europe and Italy, and he loved them, and he adapted the spaghetti western format for his Japanese samurai stories, uh, specifically these two movies, and they are so much fun. They are spaghetti westerns with a sword. There's only so many spaghetti western plots. You know, spaghetti western is a very specific thing. It's different from the American Western. It relies heavily on music and on atmosphere and on imagery. And it is, it's a pop piece, right? It is, it's operatic, it's comic books. And so given the rich history of comics of manga in Japan, uh, this lends itself really well to that format. There is very little difference between a samurai story and a spaghetti western, or even a kung fu movie, for that matter. These, these are all basic plots about revenge and greed. Uh, the beginning of this, of the first movie, opens up with our character Kiba, who is this, the, the title, the samurai wolf of the title, uh, wandering into town. He discovers basically a disagreement between people in the town. There's an extortion racket going on, and he gets involved. It sounds a lot like Fistful of Dollars, right? They're so similar. Um, but how it goes about it, right? The, the, uh, the battles, the sword fights, you know, it's, it's really, really fun and well done. And the second one, I think, is maybe even better than the first one, which is rare. They were shot back to back. Uh, I should also mention the first movie is an hour and 15 minutes, and the second movie is an hour and 11 minutes. These are short movies. Uh, these are B-movies by, by, by most definitions. And uh, the second movie is even more stylized with more of the cinematography of just like, if you love anime, which you probably do if you're watching a, a video about Samurai Wolf, uh, the imagery here is so influential on anime on what would later be anime, you know, posing and just like, you know, slowly, like slowly panning up to a guy holding his sword in a certain pose. Like it's so iconic. There's a scene where this guy is uh, leaning against the tree and he's like, I knew you'd come. And then like from the side of the tree, Kiba walks around and then they have, it's still the same shot. It doesn't cut. And then they walk out to both sides of, of the tree. Trees in the middle, they walk out to both sides and then they clash. It's amazing stuff. It's fantastic. These movies are so much fun. And I hope that this is a sign of more things to come. Hideo Gosha, uh, there's another Hideo Gosha movie that's hitting Blu-ray around the same time. I hope to talk to you about it when it comes out. Uh, but this, we're living in this moment right now where all of these things that maybe we haven't heard of in our part of the world, all these martial arts movies, are getting uh, an opportunity to get rediscovered on home media, on physical media. And so I hope this is just the beginning of so much more to come. This is a loaded package. It's got a 15-minute uh, a featurette with uh, uh, Hideo Gosha's daughter talking about what she saw and what was going on at the time when he was making these back, you know, 60 years ago almost. An audio commentary by, by Chris Poggiali, uh, the co-author of These Fish Break Bricks. It's a great commentary. He gives us a lot of academic stuff, but he roots it in, it's very conversational, which is the approach that I prefer. Um, it's just, uh, you know, telling us, it gives us context. Context is so important in a movie like this. Context is also provided in this 20 page booklet by uh, Robin Gatto, an essay by Robin Gatto, who was talking about the background of the movie and what, uh, what was going on in Japan at the time. For instance, I didn't realize that uh, Hideo Gosho was the son of Yakuza, and so that was part of it. Uh, that Hideo translates to hero, and he was guiding his son to have, like, you are meant for more. And I didn't know that there was this, um, after World War II in Japan, that there was this sort of anarchy period. There was sort of a chaotic period where the children of the World War II generation, of the kamikaze pilots, didn't know what they were it was almost like they were left to their own devices and all of that informs these movies which feel um they're pulpy they are b movies so there's just a lot of stuff here great booklet and uh again context is very important so we, it's both features on one disc but again they're so short that's not a problem uh i can't recommend this highly enough if you are watching this video and if this sounds interesting to you, you got to check these out. I believe at the time of this video, both of this is going for like 20, 
around twenty dollars, which is a great price for two movies on uh, Blu-ray with special features. So I'll link to it in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching this. Let me know if you check these out, what you think about them. I appreciate you. Take care. Till next time, I will catch you later.